So I tried Vim for a while, and I didn't really fall for it. Um, this talk is not about bashing either Vim or Sublime. It's just to uh, explain what I find in Sublime that I really like. Um, and a lot of these things probably are possible to do in Vim. And feel free to chime in and say that they are. Um, but so Sublime, anyway, text editor. I'll just go through a couple of, of uh, things that I really like about it. Uh, uh, first of all, I'll jump right into it, is fetch from anywhere. And what this is, it's basically a command that lets me uh, pick up uh, code from anywhere on the web. So if I do fetch a file, I have set up um, links to raw, raw pages on GitHub, where I have, for instance, all of, my, all of the refills. So if I just search here, I want to have HTML and maybe I want to have a uh, tooltip. That's the one, and I just and it just picks this from the repo, which is really nice because as soon as it's updated or if somebody else has updated it, it's gonna come here in the way it, it actually is. So it's not a snippet that's saved locally, rather picking up from a, from a repo. And the same thing with um, all of the CSS files from uh, refills. I have those there as well. And if I go to this file, this is where I manage all of these things. And here you can put in anything. Like um, if you want jQuery or something, you just want to pick it up quickly, you just put it into this file. Um, and these are obviously all my refills. So that, that one I think is really handy. Uh, it's from NetTuts. They built this one, and so you have to install it. Another one that I really like is Gists or gist. Um, it's also a um, package. And what it's pretty similar, but what I how I use it is that I do um, gists and then insert a gist. So this picks gists from my um, GitHub account. And what I have here is more like um, reminders of how things work rather than full code. So for instance, if I use Flexbox, I have like a cheat sheet there with my explanations of what they are. It's, I guess it's similar to how some people use man pages, but like these are just things that I pull in from my gists. Um, less tabs is a, um, another plugin. So Sublime uses tabs in the sense that I can now have one tab I can have two, three, four, and how many I want. I uh, step between them, you know, with like option command, just go in between like this. And usually you end up with a lot of tabs. So if you have one here, and another one there, and uh, another one there, then uh, less tabs has a series of commands for just like removing all the tabs that are older than two minutes or something. If I haven't worked on them for the last two minutes, it just wipes them out. Um, so that one's pretty handy. Uh, also with the tabs, it's easy to, if I have several files open, uh, I can move them around. So just shift control, uh, move that one there, move it back. If I highlight it, I can move it back. Um, so working with tabs like this, I feel is pretty simple. Um, okay, let's continue here. Emmet is a really nice thing that uh, allows me to never um, have to uh, write any square brackets or anything like that. So um, if I have a dot and I press tab in an HTML file, it's just going to expand it. So I have all these expressions. Um, and a class name, if I set a class name after the dot, it's going to automate that. And with this, you can have pretty complex um, expressions. So a UL that I have class name list for, uh, I want that to have eight LIs, and I just press tab, and it creates that. And what's nice here is that uh, when I type one and I tab, it's going to go to the next relevant place. So this, I think, is really nice when, when uh, writing um, markup, because I really don't like uh, writing the 
Are they called square brackets? Mm. No. Angle brackets. Angle brackets, thank you. Is that specific to HTML, CSS? CSS, as far as I know, doesn't have anything like that, but what we have for CSS is... It pretty much works with SAS. I use this with SAS. Maybe it does. But in, in no, my, my question is more of like, it knows that ul.list uh, you know, bracket li, it knows that that's going to create an HTML structure. Yes. Uh, so this is for creating like HTML? Mostly, okay. but you've used it for uh, SAS. Not for creating a SAS structure, just for doing things like position absolute, so you can do bold A and then it, it, it expands oh. to position absolute. Oh, but yeah, I don't yeah, know yeah. about what Mike can describe. But Emmet is for producing HTML. Mostly, yes. And it has and like. For other I, think, I think you can probably um, uh, tweak it so you add your own snippets in there too. So within the Emmet framework, you can just create like. Stuff. Uh, for for um, SCSS, we have this autocomplete, so position, and you have all these things. And then you can, yeah, exactly, all these relevant it's names. Like dictionary. Yeah, sometimes it, it picks the relevant ones, and yeah. sometimes for the dictionary, I haven't really um, been tweaking that correctly. But in a way, that's, that's pretty handy. Um, Multiple cursors, I guess, is a big thing in Sublime. Uh, and there are many ways of doing it. You, you, most of you have probably seen it, how I can do this. So like, there's one, I hold command, and now I have multiple cursors. And then I can move them around like this, select a lot of things, blah, blah, blah. But what's nice also is that uh, if I hold shift and control, I don't have to use my mouse and such, like shift and control, and then just move the cursor, it's going to add multiple ones. And what I really like about this is that um, uh, you can you can learn you learn ways how to use this because I, if I do like uh, I want to select I want to go for all the LIs here and I want to change them to dibs or whatever. I mean I know that's not relevant here. But if I do that uh, and now I want to go and, and switch all these. Well, you know, they're not aligning correctly. But then if I do the, the regular like move around in text command, so if I hold command and then arrow, I get to the very end of it. So by that, I, I can suddenly do this. So you learn how to use this in, in ways that are really quick. And, and also, if you like, I create stuff like this. Yeah, it, it's, it's more than it looks like after a while when you use it. So I really like that one. Um, so what's the, what's the command again to do multiple cursors? Uh, so hold, shift control. shift, control, and then arrows. Just control and the arrows. Right. Arrows up and down. Or you do um, command, uh, no, and then you do, or you hold command and click with the mouse. Oh, so so command, yeah, okay. and you just click multiple times. Um, okay, jumping past a paragraph, that's pretty basic, like, you just hold down option, and then you jump further. Um, this, I think, is pretty important for jumping fast in files. Mm -hmm. uh, and you have all the regular ones, like command to the top of the file and all that. What is a paragraph? Right, so I, th I think it is defined as not, there is no line break. Mm -hmm. Okay. Like a full line break, an empty line, I think. Um, right. Then where were we? Here we go. Selecting everything that is the same. This one I, I use a lot. And it is basically, so if I want to find all the and in this file, you can see that they're highlighted. But if I want to select them, then I just do command D and it's actually highlighting all of them and creating multiple cursors. So if I select all the and in the file and do ok instead, so now I've got that everywhere. Um, and that one is really handy too. You can select, um, you can select all also with another a command. Um, and that is, yeah, and then you have all these different ones. So Command D adds one, and the next one, and the next one. Command G goes to the next one, 
instead of selecting all of them, you just jump to the next one. Command Shift G, go to the next one uh, up or the next one down. So uh, splitting into more tabs, we've talked about that. Um, and then projects is basically so you can create projects from the menu up here that you cannot see but it looks like this so if you have opened a folder then you can say like uh, save this project with this folder and all as a project of its own so when I'm when I have a project and I do a search uh, it search it defaults to that project so that's really handy um, and then you have files to set that up so you can select your source and what to enclose in, in into a project, what the scope is, and, um, and you can set, have settings for the project, tab size and all such. Um, go to line number if possible, obviously, control G, open any file within the project, I use that all the time. So that's also within the scope of this and I just start typing and it pops up as soon as I type. So if I just want to find an SCSS file, then I start typing that and I get it open right away. So in that way I can preview files, which is pretty nice. And then like, no, that wasn't the one. Lightning, yeah, no, that wasn't the one. This was the one. Uh, package installer, um, just shift command P and then you install. And then you can just browse around packages that people have created. So it's pretty easy to just um, install new plugins like this. Um, browsing the tree. Uh, I know a lot of people don't want to use trees, but sometimes I find that it's it's pretty it's pretty useful. You can just uh, remove it by command KB like that. Take it by command KB. Uh, and if I want to go through the tree, I'll just press control zero uh, and then I move up and down like this. And the good thing about that is that it's also a way to sort of um, browse them, browse the files. Um, and also you can set a plugin to, to highlight the file you're at when you highlight a file, which I find pretty useful sometimes in, in big projects where I'm like, okay, so if I go to this file, I know in the tree that I'll see the other files in the same directory, which is really handy. Uh, this one is interesting, can I use plugin? So uh, if I want to know if background, can I use background? <laughs> Probably can, but then, <laughs> I hope so. But then I have a, sh a command for that. So control option F, control option F, and it just loads, can I use with that? And I can't use background. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so that one's pretty handy. Just a shortcut with whatever you select. Oh, wait, 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 this is interesting. It is. IE actually does not support background. <laughs> no, it's so bad. <laughs> what about background color? I, I never knew that background was not, I don't think they have it in there. Yeah. Would you like to include usage data for that country? Why not? Aren't we using background all the time? Yeah, we are, but yeah. uh, this is weird. Yeah, it's weird. Oh, no, no, this is CSS background blend mode. Oh. It's not no, the right one. Yeah, yeah, that's not the right one. Why is it? Okay, I mean, okay here we go. Background decision. Not even that, not oh, even that one. That's weird that it... Yeah, I was, I was surprised. Okay. It seems not to have background. Background is supported it's everywhere. Yeah, background supported. Anyway, so that one's handy. Is uh, it a, a package or... It's a package. Yeah. Uh, trimmer I, is nice if you end up with a lot of this stuff, mm -hmm. like trailing white space, and it just trims. Um, so you can, if you have extra lines that I have all the time, you can collapse those and get rid of them. I like this one. Yeah. And then you can uh, delete empty lines if you want to just squash everything down. Uh, remove blank spaces or uh, trailing white space was the one we're looking for, so now we remove that. Uh, and if you want to minify, you can do that with trimmer as well, um, and all that. So that's a pretty handy tool. I, I, what, what I like about this is all these packages are so easy to install and uninstall, so you don't have to go anywhere, you just do it from the, from the program. Um, and then if, if we go into um, 
just quickly CSS stuff. We, ha we looked at the autocomplete. Um, the go to anything command is nice because if I do command R, then I get a list of all the class names that I have here. And the same goes for, I think, methods. And it has like a set of rules for what it's looking for. So then I can just look, say that I have a third class. Where is that? OK, What's there the it is. It's command R. Command R. So I have all these in, in these files. I've written all these things, if you want to look at it later. Do you have them somewhere? Yeah, I'll, I'll fax it to you. <laughs> fax it to yeah. me. Are you an Apple? Yeah. Uh, so like on a related thing, if you are in some HTML and you have a class name highlighted, can you jump to it? In the CSS? Yeah, in the CSS. That would be great, but I haven't found anything like that. I know that Brackets from Adobe tries to do that. They have this kind of like accordion style. In the HTML, it opens up an accordion and shows the CSS. And I'm not sure that actually works. It's a nice yeah. feature, but anyway. Uh, color preview, I think, is pretty handy too, especially when you have like hex codes like this and you might not know what they are. Oh, nice. They're also color pickers, but I find that I always want to go to the inspect browser. And the new, I mean, the new Chrome inspector is so nice with its palette, the picker. Mm -hmm. So I tend to do those things there and just bring it over to here rather than use a picker here. But yeah, that, that's, that's just a few things that I find uh, nice about Sublime. So a few of your favorite things. You are my favorite. Thank you. Okay, thank That's you. it. Thanks. So now we can spend the rest of the lunch talking about how you do can this in the